Right, we have to continue with our lessons. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at the theory of the second best. And um, we're going to look at um, negative externalities as well. So let's start with the theory of the second best. And in this case now, we say the theory of the second best. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do the theory of the second best. And in this case, I will start by showing you what we did. And, and, and you will see that it just goes hand in hand with what we have been doing all the time when we derive production possibilities and so on. So in this case, we are producing two goods. Remember, the first one here are necessities. And then the other ones here are luxuries. And then this is the origin. So the vertical axis, these are our necessities. And then the horizontal axis, these are our, our, our luxuries. So remember, if I am to draw the production possibility curve, I'm going to do this. And, and, and this is the production possibility curve. So if I produce at any point that is on here, it means production efficiency. But the good thing now, that, which is what I need to do is, I will have to look at my preferences and tastes. How do we measure preferences and tastes? We look at the indifference curves. So now, obviously, look at this indifference curve. I just say total utility one. Now, that's the highest. And if you look at it here, that point where, where I say E, that is the highest po uh, possible uh, uh, achievable utility that I can get. But obviously, at that point now, it will depend on whether I've got enough money or not. So now what happens now here is, remember, at point E, and I'll just say at point E, M R P T marginal rate of product transformation is equals to and what is the marginal rate of product transformation? Marginal rate of product transformation is the slope of the production possibility curve. And then in this case we say it is equals to and I, and I, and I come to the slope of this one is equals to M R S. M R S is the slope of the indifference curve. So at that point now the two are equal. So now we know that if the two slopes are equal now, I'm going to do what? I'm going to maximize them. The, 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 I'm going, that's a point of efficiency. But the problem in this case now is that we do not have enough money. And how do I show that we do not have enough money? I'm going to show that by drawing the, the budget line that goes this way. Look, this is the budget line. That's the budget line. And we know that the budget must be straight. So, and you know how to find this point because you just say income divided by price of luxury. And then here, how to get this point here? We just say income divided by the price of necessities. So, in this case, now we can see that this budget line does not touch the indifference curve. Remember, it typically gives your utility curve. So therefore now it means I must draw the lower utility curve here. And then that is total utility two. Now you can see that now this is the lower one. So if you look at this point here, now we've got the new equilibrium here, which is E2. Now this, this E2 now, it is what? It is inside. Inside the, 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 the what do you call it? The, the production possibility curve. But now, we are saying that the firm here has got the opportunity to do what? The firm has got the opportunity to produce here at point X. Because if they produce at point X, and I'll just say at X, we achieve production FE. Efficiency. But this one here, if you really look at it carefully, that satisfaction that you get at point X is below this indifference curve 2 because now the level of satisfaction that this total utility curve 2 gets is above the point X. 
So which means now you'll be utilizing all your resources, but you'll be getting lesser satisfaction. So therefore, it is better for you to produce at point. Now, it is better to produce at point. At point E2. Why? Because if we produce at point E2 here, we now getting higher satisfaction than at point X. But we are getting some unused resources. So we're using less resources, but we're getting higher satisfaction. So that is why now we call this uh, theory of the second best. Because instead of producing at X where you misuse all these um, resources and then in the end you get less satisfaction it is better for you to produce at point e2 which is inefficient point remember any point inside the production possibility means production inefficiency but if we have enough money and then it would be very good obviously to produce here if this line here was our budget line it would be very nice because that point here point e here when E represent both production efficiency and allocative efficiency, which is actually the ideal point. But now we end up opting for the theory of the second best because we do not have um, enough resources. We don't have enough money. So if we don't have enough money, we cannot go and say because X is on our budget line and, and then we, we spend that because it gives less um, uh, 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 satisfaction and if you really want to understand why do i say x is giving less satisfaction let me draw the utility curve the you will see what i'm talking about and then it will go like this you see now if you draw the total utility now this is a lower total utility curve now you can see that this one is is actually below the line that go through that it is actually below so now i want you to sort of look at this and 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 and, and practice them carefully but before I continue to the negative externalities, I want you to know that MRS here, the slope, and, and, and the, 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 the slope of this one is marginal cost of luxury divided by marginal cost of necessity. So now, and then we say in this case, at this point here, is equals to this one. MRS is what? Marginal utility of luxury divided by marginal utility of necessities. You must just practice those ones. But now if you put the um, budget line as well, then you will say it's equal to the ratio of prices as well. But in this case, now I'm going to move on to um, um, the second one, which is negative externalities. So negative externalities, this is what happens with regard to negative externalities. So with regard to negative externalities, negative externalities. Now with regard to negative externalities, this is what we do. We are now going to look at it this way. We are going to say, okay, the firm here is producing chemical. And we know that now, obviously, if the firm is producing chemical, this is very harmful to the atmosphere and everything like that. But the firm will not consider that, you know, it causes harm to the societies and so on. No. All they consider is what? They will just consider their private costs. So in that case now, what they will do is they will have their supply curve here, which is their supply of chemical. And I just say supply one. But you must remember that this supply curve here, considers only the or takes into account only the the private cost and then if this is the demand for the chemical the demand for chemical now we've got demand and supply so what the firm will do is if the firm is trying to practice what we call the um, um, demand and supply in terms of determining its price so it will say no this is where demand is equal to supply therefore under efficient markets, price or P1 is what they're going to sell these products for, and then Q1 is what they will produce. This is exactly what we have learned ever since high school. But now the problem is that now, in this case, it's not business as usual. Why? Because this is a chemical, and a chemical is actually bad. So what the government will do is, the government will impose tax 
Why would the government impose tax on this chemical? Because they want to reduce the production of, of chemical. So now in this case, what will happen is when they impose tax on that, producing chemical becomes expensive. So if it's now expensive, it means they will produce less. And now the supply curve will shift to the left. Now we've got S1 plus T. I just say plus T, which means I say plus tax. Now, the price now will be here. And then the price will be what? Will be P2. So we can see now that the price will increase to P2. And I want you to look very carefully here and so that we understand what I'm doing. So if the price is P2, so which means that what is going to be produced is Q2. So you can see that now the price went up, the quantity produced went down. So the government is successful in reducing the production of, of um, a chemical. So in this case now, I want you to look at this. The consumer will have to pay what? More than the previous equilibrium. You can see they pay P1, P2, which is above P1. But the firm will receive here at this point on their original supply chain. So the firm will produce what? We will receive what? P3. You can see that. So now it means what? It means the whole lot from P3 to P2, which is this distance that you see here, is equals to tax. But now the question is, who is paying this tax? And, and, and now you say now, the portion is paid of this pay tax is paid by consumers. So consumers are paying P1 to P2. That is the part of tax that they are paying. Consumer. Consumer tax. That's the consumer that is paid by, 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 by consumer. That's tax that is paid by consumers. But the firms as well, they must pay tax to government. And then firms are paying what? P3. P3 to P1. And now we can see that firms now are paying P3 to P1. And this is what? Companies. This is a tax that is paid by, by companies. Now, well, then, then you must say here P1 to P2, tax paid by consumers. And then P3 to P1, tax paid by firms. Okay, companies here, I mean what? I mean, I mean firms. So therefore, now it means what? It means both the firm, because the firm will pay this amount, which means they receive less than they used to get. But as well, consumers now, they are paying more than they used to, to, to pay. So which means this other portion of firms now, we can see that of, 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 of firms here, now it goes to tax. And then now, obviously, consumers now, they must add on top of their prices. So I want you to practice it. But in the end, the government is very successful in terms of reducing uh, production because now production of this chemical now went down from Q1 to Q2. Okay, I would like to thank you very much. And I want you to go and revise these two again. Revise them many times until you really get what is going on because um, uh, we are now almost done with the the syllabus i mean you will see that um next time now when i come we are going to be working with efficiencies um in production and, and efficiencies in consumption thank you very much